Okay, okay. I said I would have it ready by Friday, and I will. Angela, this is the third time this week you've been late with your reports. What's going on? This may sound like a familiar scenario. You may have heard it around your office or experienced it firsthand. We all experience job-related and personal stress that can impact our effectiveness at work. That's why New York State and its unions created the Employee Assistance Program, also known as EAP. As an EAP coordinator, I help to provide these services in my agency. Over the next few minutes, we're going to review what EAP is and how it can be used as an effective tool for supervisors to help identify work performance issues before they become serious. More specifically, we'll look at how a referral to EAP can often correct an underlying problem and discuss ways we can work together to help employees resolve these issues. As a supervisor, it is your responsibility to ensure that the work done in your unit meets a high standard and is completed on time. Despite having the appropriate knowledge, skills, and tools to do the job, an employee may not meet expectations. You may have to step in and work with that employee to identify the reasons why. Sometimes a minor nagging problem is causing a distraction, or the employee may be experiencing a major life event. When this happens, ideally you'd meet with the employee to explore possible solutions, work together to find the best solution, and continue to monitor the employee's work performance for improvement. But it's rarely that simple. When financial, family, legal, medical, or other problems are negatively affecting an employee's work performance, EAP can provide confidential assistance to connect employees to the services they need to get back on track. Ultimately, this can provide relief for the employee and subsequently for you, the supervisor. EAP can also help the agency utilize the full potential of its workforce by minimizing turnover, reducing employee absences, and improving employee morale and productivity. EAP supports management's goals to improve the work, family, and personal lives of its employees. You may be asking yourself, what is EAP and how are services provided? To start, EAP is a peer model, so services are provided by fellow employees working right in your own agency. These individuals serve as your agency's EAP coordinators and are specially trained to help struggling coworkers. The EAP coordinator meets with an employee either in person or by phone and conducts an assessment of the employee's situation. The coordinator will then provide information, support, and if needed, referrals for services. In addition, the EAP coordinator creates and maintains a file of local, state, and national resources and is familiar with those resources, including fees and eligibility requirements. Serves as a resource to agencies and facilities for addressing workplace issues such as layoffs and responding to crisis is knowledgeable about health insurance and other negotiated benefits for state employees. Maintains regular communication with the EAP regional representative who serves as a liaison between the agency's employee assistance program and New York State EAP. Collaborates with the regional representative to provide orientations and training for new employees, supervisors, management, and union representatives when requested, arranges a return to work meeting between management and an employee who has been out of work for an extended period of time. Assists the agency or facility with developing a response to critical incidents in the workplace. EAP services are provided at no cost to the employee. All of this is made possible with the assistance of your agency's EAP committee. The committee's main function is to promote the program and select, support, and supervise the EAP coordinator. Committee members who are also agency employees all recognize the value of EAP and work hard to strengthen services by evaluating the coordinator's work activities. I became an EAP coordinator by responding to a post for the position. After an interview with my agency's EAP committee, I was selected and recommended to management for appointment. Once appointed, I received specialized training in how to accurately and confidentially assess an employee's situation. Remain impartial and non-judgmental when making an assessment or facilitating a labor management discussion. Identify resources for the employee. 
Make appropriate referrals once the assessment process is complete. Uphold the ethical principles of EAP. Respond to individuals and the needs of the workplace in the aftermath of a critical incident. Now I'm given release time from my regular job duties to serve full time as an EAP coordinator. Since I already have experience working at my agency, I understand the culture and am prepared to meet the unique demands of the New York State workforce. Fortunately, due to my full-time status, I'm available to meet with employees during the workday, whether it's in person, on site, by phone, or email. My agency also provides me the time needed to develop a comprehensive resource file and attend required EAP training. It's vital that supervisors advocate for release time for their coordinators and committee members to ensure the overall success of their EAP and the program's ability to help struggling employees. You may be wondering, how do I make a referral to EAP? Well, when you begin to notice a pattern of behavior associated with poor work performance, first determine if the employee has the skills and resources needed to complete the job properly. The occasional misstep, late report, or sour attitude is hardly indicative of a serious problem. However, a pattern of poor performance could indicate a problem. The key is to document such behavior in specific concrete terms as part of a standard supervisory process. If you observe declining performance, ask yourself, while on the job, does the employee seem distracted, exhibiting inconsistent work patterns or unacceptable behavior? Is the employee making uncharacteristic errors in judgment or missing deadlines? Is the employee frequently late or absent? Other behaviors to look for include abrupt changes in mood or attitude, unusual flare-ups of temper signs of poor relationships with coworkers, a deterioration of personal appearance and hygiene, reports of repeated or unusual accidents on or off the job, frequently borrowing money from other employees, the smell of alcohol. Once you've identified and documented any performance issues, it's time to meet with the employee privately to address your concerns through your agency's performance improvement process. It's important not to be confrontational. Emphasize that the action is based solely on the employee's work performance and that the meeting is strictly confidential. Suggest the employee work with EAP to reduce or eliminate the underlying reasons for the poor performance. It is the employee's responsibility to reach out to EAP. So once the meeting is over, give the employee time to contact an EAP coordinator and continue to monitor work performance, noting any changes. Employees may be anxious or uncertain about asking for help. Reassure them that EAP can help them through difficult situations. However, it's important to point out that participation in EAP is strictly voluntary. Although you may refer an employee to EAP, you cannot mandate participation. If an employee declines to seek help through EAP, include this in your documentation. Sometimes, coworkers may try to get involved and ask you questions about the employee. It is imperative that you do not share any information and maintain the employee's privacy. Otherwise, you risk damaging your credibility as a supervisor and the integrity of EAP. In fact, confidentiality is the cornerstone of EAP. As a coordinator, I cannot share any information without an employee's written consent. The only exceptions would be if the information that has been disclosed to me is required to be shared by law, agency work rule, or executive order if an individual is likely to cause self-harm or hurt others, or when there is a reasonable suspicion of child abuse. It is my job to let employees know that if they choose to participate in EAP, I will maintain their trust, remain neutral, and keep all discussions confidential. The employee must sign a consent for the release of information form for each person or organization the employee would like me to reach out to. This includes the supervisor who may want confirmation of the employee's participation in EAP. Be aware that if an employee received help in the past, it doesn't mean the problem won't reoccur or evolve into additional issues. It's important to continue keeping detailed documentation of the situation at hand. In instances where an employee's work performance continues to decline, contact your agency's labor relations staff to determine next steps.
Now, truthfully, you may be reluctant to refer an employee to EAP. Perhaps you're friends with the employee or just not comfortable suggesting help. This is a common and natural reaction. Nevertheless, your role as a supervisor requires you to work with employees to try to improve their declining performance. Let's take a few minutes to discuss some of the potential barriers that may prevent you from making an EAP referral. Denial. There really isn't a problem. In time, it'll go away. Friendship with employee. If I suggest help, he'll be mad at me. Loyalty to employee. Jack and I go way back. There's no way I could suggest he needs help. The employee is a union official. This could really create friction in the office. It's not my problem. I don't want to get involved. His reports are on time. We're on budget. There are more important things to worry about. Hostility of employee. The last thing I need now is to get into it with her, especially after the way she's been acting. Lack of confidence to intervene. Who am I to suggest help? I'm not a therapist. Concern about not being liked or accepted. I don't know if I'll get any support for doing this. I could just be creating a headache for myself. Regardless of the barrier, as a supervisor, it is your job to help your employees perform their jobs. You're not their therapist or counselor. Your role is to follow good supervisory protocol, which includes making a referral to EAP so the employee can access the appropriate help when needed. If you need help making a referral, you can always consult with your agency's EAP coordinator or the EAP regional representative. In addition to helping individual employees, EAP coordinators can assist agency management in the aftermath of a critical incident, regardless of whether it occurs inside or outside the workplace. These types of events can severely impact a group of employees. Examples of critical incidents include the death of a coworker, an act of terrorism, a serious workplace injury, severe weather events, or a public health emergency. In situations like these, extreme stress can overwhelm usually effective coping mechanisms. In the wake of one of these events, management can consult with their EAP coordinator to provide resources to help the affected employees recover and to aid in the recovery of the workplace as a whole. As a supervisor, you too have a role in supporting and promoting your agency's EAP. You can advocate for release time for EAP coordinators and committee members, support wellness activities, and encourage participation in EAP promotional events. To find other ways EAP can help you and your employees, check out the EAP website. Here, you will find a list of some of the problems we help struggling employees overcome as well as the contact information for each agency's EAP coordinators. Your EAP coordinator would be happy to meet with you to answer any of your questions. You can also reach the New York State EAP main office at the following phone numbers. And don't forget, you can also seek EAP services for situations occurring in your own life. EAP is a negotiated benefit available for all executive branch employees and their families, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, every day of the year. EAP, life less complicated. Work-Life Services programs are joint labor management programs that benefit New York State employees by enhancing employee well-being, increasing productivity, and improving morale in the workplace. The Work-Life Services programs include the Employee Assistance Program, network child care centers, and directions, pre-retirement planning. The Work-Life Services programs are funded through the collective bargaining agreements between the State of New York and the Public Employee Unions CSEA, PEF, UUP, DISCOBA, PBA NYS, GSEU, Council 82, and DC 37. The Office of Employee Relations contributes on behalf of Management Confidential Employees.